I am Demonis. Jesus is my king. You are my family. Hello, I am Demonis. Thank you for joining. It's been approximately six months, uh, give or take a day or two, since Donald Trump has been president. And with all the mainstream media coverage saying, oh, he hasn't done so much, he hasn't passed no major laws, uh, it's just really terrible, he hasn't got anything done, I thought it's maybe a good time to put things in perspective, catch you up on some things that maybe you missed. On January 24th, 2017, just days after taking office, Trump withdrew from the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the T -T TPP, uh, this was a treaty that was essentially behind closed doors. Even congressmen couldn't read the contents of this treaty that Obama was trying to negotiate with other governments. And anyone who had any, you know, any leaks that talked about what the content was is it was going to be very destructive to the U.S. economy, very unfair to us, uh, kind of like NAFTA on steroids. January 26th, uh, 2017, also just days after taking office, Trump signed some executive orders authorizing the Dakota Access Pipeline to move forward. Again, this is uh, just like the TPP, this is delivering within days on campaign promises Trump made. Along with this, he also um, added a requirement, uh, an executive order, it wasn't really a requirement, um, that said that all new development should use U.S. steel. Now, this wasn't a, a hard and fast rule, but it said, where possible, new construction should use U.S. steel. And this actually, contrary to some pundits and everything, this actually did come to pass. So TransCanada was already building the Keystone Pipeline. They already had ordered a lot of steel. Um, so not to say that Keystone Pipeline is going to be all U.S. steel, but in uh, March, of 20, uh, March 27th, um, they did uh, say they were going to order 200 miles of additional U.S.-made steel pipe. This should be fairly familiar with uh, most people. Also, not very long, January 31st, 2017, not long after taking office, uh, Trump picks Judge, Judge Gorsuch as a nomination for Supreme Court, which uh, Neil Gorsuch was then confirmed on April 7th. 2017. Again, fulfilling a campaign promise, Trump had put out in midsummer 2016 the list of judges that he might pull from for a nominee, and Neil Gorsuch was one of those, and generally widely respected. On February 11th, 2017, uh, Trump signed the controversial uh, executive order. Now, I don't know why this is controversial, as in this title from NPR. Unlike Bush, Trump invokes terror threat and gets pushback, not deference. In this case, Trump wasn't saying we're going to shut down all immigration. This is specifically directed refugees from embattled territories known to harbor terrorist threats, such as Syria and Iraq. Of course, mainstream media and, the, again, the judicial system trying to right law from the bench, uh, was actually going against the Constitution, which the Constitution really does clearly give President Trump, or any president, clear authority on immigration into the United States. Moving forward to June 26, the Supreme Court actually uh, authorized Trump's travel ban to uh, proceed. Uh, there were some minor things about uh, the definition of grandparents and so forth, and certain who are considered family members to be not under the ban. Coming back to February, because we're still talking about the month of February and what Trump did that you might have missed uh, because the mainstream media is kind of hiding it from you, perhaps, uh, dare I say. Trump administration orders U.S. schools to ignore Obama transgender bathroom efforts. If you remember, in the fall of 2016, the Obama administration sent a memo out to many public school systems saying, you must allow children to choose whichever bathroom they identify with. Also in February, uh, February 24th, 
Trump ordered a reversal via executive order of Obama's executive orders on water regulations. So the, the negative side of this is that the rule has faced intense op opposition from Republicans in Congress, the Obama rule, uh, farmers and energy companies. Critics contend the rule vastly expands the federal government's authority and could apply to ditches and small, isolated bodies of water. The EPA under President Barack Obama said the rule protects the waters that are next to rivers and lakes and their tributaries because science shows that they impact downstream waters. So we can debate all day long about whether we should protect the environment in every space possible, but it's really it was really severely limiting and changing the way we were able to do business in the United States. Moving into the month of March. Uh, March 13th, 2017, uh, this is when Trump actually actively was trying to push Obamacare repeal uh, through the uh, Congress, catching us up to the present. June 19th, um, again, we're trying again. Uh, Republicans and Trump are trying to get rid of Obamacare. And... There's been several attempts, including just a straight repeal or repeal and a replace. And uh, Trump has actually gone to say, hey, you guys shouldn't go on vacation before this is done, before a vote is taken. Now, this is another one also from uh, the original publish on this article was 331. And uh, Trump signs orders to review trade laws, severely pu punish foreign cheaters. So on March 31st, Donald Trump signed two executive orders on trade, one dealing with a review of the U.S. trade deficit and another to strengthen anti-dumping rules and enforcement. Uh, mostly this was uh, aimed at trade abuse for steel, uh, but it's, you know, dumping, so for those who don't know, occurs when countries export a product at a lower price than it would be sold for at home. Moving along to April 12, 2017. So in what's really <laughs> quite a gangster move, uh, Trump was due to have a, a scheduled diplomatic meeting with the Chinese president at Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. And while they were eating dinner, while the Chinese president was eating the most beautiful piece of chocolate, chocolate cake, Trump told him that he was about to bomb a Syrian airfield, um, which again would be showing that um, Trump takes a stand against uh, any kind of uh, deception from what would be considered allies or, you know, in this case, Russia. And most notably, where this hits home is the Chinese are really the, the main importers of North Korean products. So they are definitely friends of North Korea. Um, so this was really, when you, when you think about this, this is uh, rare to see a president use this much bravado and, and really uh, for people saying, like uh, during the campaign trail and still today, mainstream media saying that, oh, he has so little experience with politics and with, with uh, the world stage. Uh, he certainly knows how to put a picture across to someone. Additionally, around that time, April 14th, 2017, again, I, th I think this is more, not so much what was going on in the area. So uh, as, as a uh, example, as, as a statement to other countries. So Trump dropped what was officially called the mother of all bombs on Afghanistan. This is a huge weapon that uh, was dropped on a known terrorist stronghold area uh, that had tons of tunnels. So this thing would just instantly demolish all of this huge territory. It was the largest non-nuclear weapon. So to me, this is a statement, a statement to Kim Jong-un and to China saying, hey, we're serious here. We're gonna take care of the situation. Don't make us take care of the situation. And if all of that wasn't enough, uh, on April 18th, 2017, uh, Donald Trump sent the U.S. Carl Vinson and it, several other battleships and, and weaponry out to the uh, Sea of Japan 
uh, to again prove the point home that we're going to defend our partners, Japan, South Korea, and that North Korea needs to uh, settle down. And this is, I think, a striking di difference because really Obama was obsessed during his whole term with Iran and really obsessed with giving them a sweetheart deal. Meanwhile, just talking words to North Korea, which is really the real threat, I think, uh, because they actually have weapons that are going into the air <laughs> that, uh, that are uh, intercontinental ballistic weapons uh, are capable of carrying those payloads. Uh, so this is a real different reversal, a different story here, and, and really when people talk about Trump not having a, a solid understanding of foreign diplomacy, what we're seeing here is we're seeing kind of, let's go back to Kennedy, JFK, you know, if we hadn't taken, if, if JFK hadn't taken such a hard line against the Russians when they started sending their fleet to Cuba, um, we might not be here talking freely on the internet today. Going into May, May 11th, 2017, Trump launched a commission on elect election integrity. This was actually an executive order creating a new um, voter fraud um, review board or commission to look into. And again, this is just following up on campaign promises. He made he made statements saying, hey, there's a lot of illegal aliens voting in this country that's skewing the ballot box, and he's following up. This is another item that I thought I'd throw in here um, that might not have caught. Attorney General Jeff Sessions reverses Obama area justice policies. And essentially in this, uh, what's been happening is Obama had made it a lot easier for people to get off of drug offenses and, and such and the Justice Department is just bringing it back to where it was prior to the Obama term. On May 14th, 2017, uh, Trump signed an executive order on cybersecurity. And again, this is really just fulfilling campaign promises after campaign promises on cyber, months of talk, talk, tough talk about internet security plans. Plenty of anticipation and a missed 90-day deadline to deliver a cybersecurity report. Trump signed an executive order on cybersecurity this week uh, to strengthen cybersecurity and federal networks and critical infrastructure. And this is widely lauded uh, as a really good plan. Uh, you know, this is one of those where the mainstream media didn't have a whole lot of bad to say because it's what they were asking for even. So moving into June, and this is another biggie. This is another big campaign promise fulfilled. Donald Trump pulls us out of the Paris Climate Accord to put American workers first. And again, here, you know, this is something that we've talked about a long time, and, you know, we don't have time in this video to talk about it. We may talk about it in future videos, but climate change, if you believe in it, what you need to do is search on the term climate gate and understand how the climate scientists who are saying that the earth is warming are not beyond cooking their books to prove their point. But the real thing here, whether you believe in climate change or not, this would have been another heavy impact against U.S. companies because all the regulations really fell on us and very little on the rest of the world. June 8th, 2017, Jeff Sessions, again, the Attorney General, acts as Obama-era payouts to leftist groups. So what's this one about? On Wednesday, Jeff Sessions announced in a memo issued to 94 U.S. Attorney's offices that they would no longer be allowed to continue the practice frequently conducted under the former Attorney General Eric Holder's Department of Justice, where companies were permitted to meet settlement burdens by panning the counts of organizations that played no part as victims or parties to the case. Seeking to direct funds where they should rightly go, Sessions insisted that the money should go to the U.S. Treasury Department or victims, not to outside parties with political ties to the party in office. Slush funds were launched during the former uh, President Barack Obama's administration and relatively unchecked during his two terms in office when the pockets of left-leaning organizations were lined with billions. 
Federalist Society Senior Legal Research Fellow Paul Larkin said the Obama slush fund practice that has been barred by the Anti-Deficiency Act, the Appropriations and Miscellaneous Receipts Act, was nothing less than improper and unlawful. No private lawyer could give away a client's settlement's money, and no government lawyer may do so either, Largan asked, argued last year, according to the Federalist so Society Review. At a time while the administration, uh, the Obama administration, was condoning it. It is time for this unlawful practice to end. So here's another thing mainstream media just totally ignores, right? Obama administration was allowing all this weird money transfers happening behind the scenes. Illegal or improper and unlawful. We don't hear about that, but we hear about alleged problems with Trump's campaign running. June 23rd, 2017, Trump signed a law to protect veterans affairs whistleblowers and expedite firings. So I'm giving you the link to the RT.com Russia Today article. It actually had the best balance of info out of all the different articles I had read on this from mainstream media and others. Um, the new law strips away senior agency executives' right to appeal disciplinary decisions to the government's Merit Systems Protection Board, placing it with an internal agency grievance process. It also allows the VA to take back bonuses paid to employees found guilty of misconduct and prohibits employees who are appealing disciplinary decisions from being placed on paid administrative leave. Current rules require a 30-day waiting period before any disciplinary action, and the VA currently has 1,500 proceedings pending. So this, again, is massive, massive uh, favoritism and corruption that could have been going on previously. So that finally brings us to the current month, July. July 5th, Trump's visit to Poland seen as a snub to the EU and Germany. Now, Trump was getting ready to go to the G8 summit, and he was doing his um, Europe tour, if you will, and the first country he visited was Poland. And why did he do that? Again, aligning to a campaign promise that he uh, numerous times uh, reiterated, uh, which was to make people pay their fair share of NATO into NATO. Now, Poland is a NATO partner, one of the few that pays more than its fair share into NATO. That is why he went there first. Now, I mentioned in the uh, previous uh, entry about climate change when he pulled us out of the Paris Accord. Also, on July uh, 20th, he appointed a guy who thinks climate science is junk. Uh, so, you know, again, I, I understand there may be some people watching this who believe that global warming is true. Uh, but if you really look into it and you look at both sides and you you understand that that's not the reality. And there's some people like uh, one of the co-founders co of the Weather Channel is firmly against cl uh, climate change science. Uh, or let's put quotation science because it's not a proven thing. But lastly, I'm going to finish up with something right from today, July 21st. Uh, U.S. tightening of stance on foreign deals is a blow to China. So we saw that Trump had enacted some things to um, uh, have a review of trade and trade policies. And what this article is about is, uh, you know, every year there's foreign, uh, foreign governments, foreign, I shouldn't say foreign governments or foreign uh, corporations that are trying to buy U.S. corporations. And what this is about is there's more stringent rules and there's a lot of, now, although there are, many uh, corporations being bought by foreign interests uh, this year, just as last year and the year before. Um, what this is saying is that there are a lot of Chinese ones that have been shut down and have either had to withdraw their bids or, um, or re-engineer their bids. So wrapping this up, I'm going to give you some links. If you want to look at some mainstream uh, links here, um, Despite claims of the contrary, Trump has signed no major laws in five months, but this NPR article goes through laws that he has signed um, and gives you some links. So I'll leave this here for you. And also, NBC has a similar thing for 
uh, executive orders with links to the executive orders. But if you're like me and you just want to go to the source, uh, give you a link to the Federal Register and you can look up those links yourself to the executive orders and the content. And just wrapping up, I think, you know, uh, I know this is a lengthy one, but a lot has happened. A lot of great stuff has happened for the people who voted for Trump and the people who are on the fence and voted for him either against Hillary or because they liked some of the things he was saying. The fact is, the real fact, not the mainstream media fact, but the real fact is that he has been living up to his promises and I've been alive for a while and I have not seen a president live up to promises like this. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Catch me on these alternate media sources.